This real world story is in full accordance with both the navigational sciences of the United States Navy, as described in a publication entitled Bowditch, all which is otherwise known as the American Practical Navigator, and with the physical evidence of Stonehenge itself. This site, located in the United Kingdom, is known as Woodhenge, since it too was configured in the same concentric manner as the monoliths of nearby Stonehenge. And both of these sites are situated in close proximity to a series of earthen mounds that are much like this one. This site is also known as Woodhenge, because it too was concentrically configured in the exact same way as Woodhenge of the United Kingdom, and also because it too was in close proximity to a series of nearby earthen mounds, the largest of this group being known today as Monk's Mound in what is now Cahokia, Illinois in the United States. And in what is now Bolivia of South America is the site known as Tawanaku, which is also called the Rectangular Stonehenge, since the standing stone pie configurations found here exactly mirror those that are found at Stonehenge. Each of these sites were purposely built with great precision to memorialize this very precisely defined circular position, whose diameter is exactly one quarter of the world's circumference an attribute which is well beyond mere coincidence. Together this triad serves as a real-world testament to the intimate navigational knowledge these safe-faring cultures had achieved. And by ultimately developing the means to connect the earth and the sky, one to the other, this seafaring culture fulfilled their master plan of creating an accurate map of the entire Atlantic seaboard. And they did so by developing this ingeniously devised circle of equal altitude, so all other points of geodetic interest could be subsequently tied to this ingeniously derived circular baseline. But in order to measure the Earth and to subsequently develop a fixed baseline and ultimately to compose a comprehensive map of a large portion of the Earth's surface, a complete understanding of time must first be developed and the solstice alignments represent one such way to accomplish this task. The circle of equal altitude is an anciently derived method of navigation on both land and sea, since any traveler will always find any other point located on the circle to lie dead straight ahead, simply by maintaining a constant angular distance from a common center star or a common center point. However, to further aid in the angular mapping process, other companion circles of equal altitude which in this particular case are ingeniously incorporated into the parent baseline as geometrical equals, allows anyone traveling within sight of these three star points to both navigate and subsequently chart their position in any associated terrestrial features with relative ease using just angular measurements alone. This information is technically known to navigators as the fixed position of the observer. This simplified view of the subject circles of equal altitude represents only one such case. However, there are many other circles of positions which can be derived from any other part of the global sphere. Since the celestial sphere presents more than 2,000 star points to choose from at any given moment on any given night. This is how and why the gnomons at Stonehenge, Woodhenge, and Tawanaku were ingeniously configured and joined together to ultimately allow for the creation of the first precise almanacs, terrestrial maps, and celestial charts to be produced on a global scale by providing the means of recording and subsequently plotting each accurate fix. In addition, this matrix of equal altitude circles also creates a navigator's spherical triangle which allows for a selected point on Earth to be matched with a corresponding star point on the celestial sphere which allows for the collection of fixes to be plotted on either a sphere or on a flat map by virtue of linear projections. But to begin the refinement process leading to the establishment of this particular circle of equal altitude, certain initial points were located on a semi-permanent basis. And only later, after applying the proper correction factors, were the final geodetic points memorialized with a grand and enduring permanence 
But to begin the refinement process leading to the establishment of this particular circle of equal altitude, certain initial points were located on a semi-permanent basis, and only later, after applying the proper correction factors, were the final geodetic points memorialized with a grand and enduring permanence, especially since it is now known that this triad of awe inspiring structures were intentionally built not only to serve as an indelible and undeniable testament to a most remarkable global and scientific enterprise, but also because this great accomplishment spanned across a great cultural spectrum, which from the beginning was designed not to divide, but rather to join one culture to the other. This is perhaps the most thought-provoking realization of all. But the establishment of this magnificently precise baseline, which made all of this possible, could only have been achieved with a most profound understanding of natural time. Which is why they smartly chose to begin their enterprise at each vastly separated location, at the very moment when both the Earth and the Sun had seemingly come to a complete astronomical standstill on the day of the solstice. So the first precise map of the entire Atlantic periphery could become a reality. And it was thereafter memorialized for harmonic posterity.